your writing career, Har Tree. Hello, it's Donald Printon Jr. Yeah, Donnie's fine. <laughs> Donnie, okay. It's so nice to meet you. I'm Ivana, the novelette. And nice today, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm, I, it's a wonderful uh, a pleasure to be able to interview you for Horror Tree Magazine and uh, anticipation, in anticipation for the horror anthology that is being released that you are contributing to. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's exciting. <laughs> the uh, the uh, Vindication of Monsters, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful Vindication of Monsters, yes, by editor Claire Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, great. I actually did, uh, I uh, organized some anthologies myself. They were all fiction anthologies, and I understand that this one is nonfiction, but um, I also like dark fiction, uh, all about dark fiction, uh, killer thrillers, dark mm -hmm. academia, dark fantasy, all that kind of stuff. So I definitely, I, when I saw that this was an opportunity to interview contributors to an anthology, I was like, of course, <laughs> I have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great area. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's a fun way to meet others in the um, in the literature and publishing industry because it's like it brings a whole bunch of authors all together. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially in like the horror genre, everyone in the horror genre is like so nice and everything. So it's, it's great to just kind of get out there and meet those people too. Yeah, they really are. As I've been working in the horror genre a lot more, I've found that everyone here is like they're really bonded over their shared passions of dark fiction and scary stuff. I'm like. This is such a fun community. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like to share with the viewers a little bit about yourself, please? Um, yeah. So, um, um, I don't know. There's not much. I'm, I'm a first-year PhD student um, at the University of Canterbury, New Zealand. Um, I, I've kind of had to put that on hold, though, because of the pandemic and everything. But, um, yeah, this anthology is like my first um, uh, kind of work that's been published and um, yeah, just kind of uh, add my little two cents in the, <laughs> into this kind of horror community. Truly, and, I, and I'm sure that it's been uh, such a fun experience to be able to kind of join together and, um, and, and be able to come in into this uh, anthology with everyone else. And I understand that yours was a, a film contribution, correct? Yeah, which um, I'm really glad that um, Claire accepted it because I, I wasn't sure because it was it's, I didn't know if she wanted to focus on more just Mary actual Mary Shelley's work but yeah mine focuses on uh, the Kenneth Branagh um, 93 film Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and, and what uh, inspired you to write about that particular movie for this anthology um, I just really thought um, it kind of grabbed me the way the bride of Frankenstein is kind of portrayed in that film um, because she's kind of thrown in near the end and it really kind of um, puts forth like this idea that she's, as the bride is just kind of not really her own thing. She, <laughs> she's not really giving her her chance to kind of be herself or anything. She's just kind of there for Victor and the creature to just kind of label and kind of have their own use value for her. It's kind of like she's um, she accidentally and unintentionally is uh, forced to sort of assume the role of like the side character in her own life. For sure, yeah. Especially um, that title, bride. She's called the bride. You know, the creature yeah. specifically wants a, a bride with this, this, and this characteristic. And then Victor, in this film, Victor specifically wants um, her to be like this his ideal form of Elizabeth and they're both just trying to like literally like pull her and just do with whatever they want. Yes, exactly. So what research did you do to add detail to your contribution to this uh, anthology? Um, a lot of it is really kind of based with uh, the writings of Michel Foucault and um, especially his work with like the creation of subjects and discipline because um, 
they really try to like force the subject bride and and like I said, the subject Elizabeth onto her and they have their own ideas what that should be and force those on her and kind of like discipline her to be what they want. And it actually works out pretty nicely like what Foucault um, established as like the steps for like uh, efficient functioning of a subject and the film, it kind of works out nicely in the film. It kind of matches up, which I was really happy about. (laughs) And yeah, and also uh, a lot of it was like uh, the work of uh, um, uh, Claire Colebrook. She was a big inspiration too, because she talks about with Frankenstein, how um, the failure of Victor was that he couldn't really go far enough. It's not that he went too far and, kind of defied nature and God is that like, Oh, he created this new thing, but instantly was repulsed by it. And so he wasn't able to like, he couldn't go far enough and accept this creature as a new form of life. He was just, Oh, this is, this is monstrous. That's, that's what he was thinking. Yeah. One thing I love about the horror genre is that in some, in many ways, I think it captures reality almost better than any other genre. And it kind of, yes, it sort of elaborates it in sort of a way and kind of fictionalizes like putting like real monsters in stories, but it captures the, like the essence of humanity in some ways and the brokenness of our society sometimes. And in a way that's entertaining too and frightening, but it's frightening because we see the ways that reality kind of connects and intertwines into it. And it's almost like, you know, this monster was created, for example, and he didn't realize, like, his creator didn't realize the horrible thing he had invented until it was alive and it was kind of out of control. And um, even with Frankenstein's Bride, it's like she is forced to kind of be this, this, you know, the woman behind these men in her lives, pretty much. And that's kind of, those are two kind of things about Frankenstein that is um, definitely stood out to me. And I know that there's been so many other takeaways about it, too. And um, what do you hope is the takeaway for readers of your uh, entry uh, into the anthology? Oh, um, wow. I, I'm just I'm, I just hope they like it. <laughs> I'm happy if, okay. if they read it and they're entertained and just kind of um, think, oh, that, if they like think yeah, that that was interesting. I'm I'm glad I read that. I'd be I'd be happy with that. I, okay. yeah. that's, that's cool too. I mean, yeah. that's what we want as writers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> Always. Whenever I hear reviews about any stories that are published or edited or or written even, and I hear good reviews, I'm like. My day is yeah. made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna ride this high. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, in your opinion, what would you prefer, coffee or tea? I think I'm a I'm a tea man. Yeah. Um, unless I have like I have like a lot of I have to like get some work done or something, then I'll go for coffee. Uh-huh. But yeah, usually coffee just makes me real jittery, so mm-hmm. I need a, a nice a nice tea is <laughs> good for me. Uh-huh. I gotta have at least a couple of cu- cups of either espresso, macchiato, latte, or straight coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make me jittery. I think, I don't know what it is, but I almost have no effects from it. I just really like need the taste of it every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah, don't I, know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> there is something, there is like a nice, that, that like little hit that the coffee gives you. There is something nice about that. Yeah. But, Yes. Yeah, <laughs> coffee is an experience to me. But at night, I do love a good tea. Right now, I have um, bergamot and um, I have these, this nice new uh, oat milk creamer called uh, Barista. It's a Barista oat milk that's come out and it's become like really popular in the coffee and tea community, apparently, because it's like velvety like creamer, but it's oat milk and it's so mm-hmm. good. <laughs> That does sound good, yeah. <laughs> amazing. The barista quality, they call it, because it's extra, like, condensed and velvety and luscious. Wow. Barista quality. I'm going to look that up, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> the one by Oatly, the one by Oatly and the gray, the gray carton, my favorite. <laughs> gray carton. Okay. I'm going to look that. <laughs> I'll see yeah. if I can find that. It's going to be a treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in your pastimes, what do you prefer? reading nonfiction or fiction, or perhaps maybe you're more into watching movies in your pastime. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, movies are for me, uh, <laughs> but cool. um, I think I, I, between the other two, I think I'm, I'm more of a, a nonfiction. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm reading right now, like um, 
a book on QAnon, and that that's yeah. just it's it's just fascinating. <laughs> <That kind of. laughs> I bet it is. Yeah, <laughs> lot to dive into there. <laughs> oh, there's so much. It's. <laughs> I saw a documentary about that one. It was it was shocking. <laughs> oh, is it the 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 HBO one? Is it that one? Or? No, where did I oh. see that? It might have been like an indie, like an indie kind that was like at a film festival or something. Oh, I, nice. So I watch some movies on uh, online sometimes. Um, I do like, so I like watching documentaries. I usually watch documentaries about history. Um, and then if I watch a movie, usually I do like a thriller or horror movie. And recently I just saw Hostel for the first time because it was recommended to me. Oh. And that was something. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I, <laughs> I hear it's pretty brutal. <laughs> it is, but it's not quite, it's not quite up there with Saw. It's, okay. it's, it's like it's it's somewhere underneath saw, but it's it's a little more gory than like the average horror viewer would, would probably tolerate. But it's not quite up there with saw. It was it was okay. I okay. get three stars. <laughs> um, yeah, I've shied away from like the the torture stuff. I'm I've, I'm too squeamish for that stuff. Even though I love the horror genre, it's just <laughs> yeah. I feel like now more of my style of horror is more like Psycho and The Silence of the Lambs. Although Silence of the Lambs is not even considered horror, it's a suspense. But that's more my style. Yeah. Yes. Those there's are my favorites. Good choices. Thank there's, you. There's, there's, <laughs> there's some good choices there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm much more into, yeah, like that. I'm much more into things that keep you in suspense and scare you that way than just things that flat out show you gore. Because mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like it's almost like a cop out form of horror to me. It's like scare me psychologically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there is something to be said. I do. I do love Sam Raimi and <laughs> like mm. um, and it, his use of gore in like Evil Dead. It's oh. it, but it, it's not even like I don't know. It's, it's more like humor in a way, and so <laughs> it's it kind of like bypasses that squeamishness. But my squeamish. That's true. I, I haven't actually seen any of the Evil Dead, but I've seen so many people in the horror community talk about it in different, like, positive ways. And I'm like, it has, like, a cult, it's like a cult classic at this point. And I'm like, I need to see what that's all about at some point. So I have a goal to watch the classic ones and the remakes. So probably the classic ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's a new one coming out uh-huh. this year or next year. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fun stuff ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what is, uh, what does the act of writing mean to you? Ooh, um, <laughs> it's, uh, hmm. I don't know, I think it's just kind of, like kind of fun just to kind of make stuff up. <laughs> it's, that's a boring answer, but I was just kind of, um, I mean, I don't write um, fiction. I, I, I try to do more like, um, uh, uh, I'm not, I don't even know, just come up with stuff yeah. I can say about movies, but, <laughs> um, like analysis. Yeah. I, I, that's what I'm trying to do. And I don't know, it's kind of, it's fun to, it's kind of like a little puzzle. It's like, what can I, what can I say about this film or something? What can I work will this little bit of information I've come across fit into it? And like, how's this like making me feel and yeah, you know, stuff. And it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little puzzle. <laughs> that's fun to do. I like that. That's a, that's a good answer. I don't think that's boring at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what uh, what is the most horrifying thing to you about reality? Ooh, wow! If you, if you can answer, there's a lot of great <laughs> things out there. <laughs> there's a lot, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hmm. when, I, when I put that question on here for the for the uh, interviewees for this anthology, because I've asked each one this question, and I, every time I put it on there, I'm like, this is such a weighty question. Should I even keep <laughs> on here? <laughs> no, it's a good question. It's it's really making me like, how do I like prioritize like my fear <laughs> about yeah. everything that's going on? Yeah. Um, wow. I mean. <laughs> Fascism is pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> it's like, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be pretty popular these days, and yeah. so <laughs> I'll stick. I'll stick with that. That's a safe answer. I'll stick I with think, fascism. <laughs> yes, that's a good one, and I can agree with it too. I'm, okay. sure, I'm sure the, most of the viewers here at Hard Street can agree. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> also. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer indeed. Um, so further on, uh, what can, where can we find out more about your future projects? Oh boy. Um, I, I don't really have <laughs> a, a, a social media. Pr- I mean, I have like an Instagram and everything, but it has nothing to do with like my writing or anything. It's just like, um, little dumb pictures I take, but um, yeah. I I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have any. Okay. Um, <laughs> look out for A Vindication of Monsters. I think that's coming out next year. And um, yeah, that's that's all I have out there at the moment. Um, oh. well, so I, I guess I could plug my, fr- can I plug my friends? Yeah. Uh, he has, they have a, a website called um, Pinhole Cinema where they do like film analysis and stuff. Oh, um, I'm, awesome. I'm not on their board or uh, anything, but I, they're really good, so I'd, I'd like to plug them, I guess. Well, that's thoughtful, and, and I bet that they'll appreciate that so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So what does, what does a day in the life of uh, Donnie <laughs> look like? Oh, um, I guess um, get up, um, stumble out of bed, and <laughs> try and get up the strength to, like, go to the gym or something so I can mm-hmm. get that done, have my tea. And yeah. just kind of uh, start reading for the day and see if I can get anything written for my PhD. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. What are you getting your PhD in? Um, so I'm doing it on um, film studies. Oh, I'm awesome. looking at horror films. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had to put it off for now for, because of the pandemic, but I'm hoping to like uh, pick it up again soon. Good, good. That's wonderful. I will be graduating with my master's in media and art summer 2023. Oh, very nice. I'm so excited to be done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have not taken any breaks in between from bachelor's degree to master's, from high school to bachelor's to master's. I haven't taken any breaks. Oh not even my summers. I am so tired. <laughs> wow, I bet, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. you're doing this? Wow. Yes. And I run a, I run a, a small press, also aesthetic press, and uh, we focus on nothing but commercial dark fiction. And it's, been, it's been a learning experience, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. It's been a lot, but it's been really fun, and I, I hope to continue that through years and years on. That's, that's my ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It's been wonderful to be able to discuss this uh, anthology with you and our different passions and our interest in uh, dark fiction and in the horror genre. And uh, we will definitely be checking out the Friends podcast. (laughs) And even though we only get little pictures and some pictures on your Instagram, I would definitely love to know what the the handle is so we can tell the fans. Oh, um, (laughs) it's um, the full Donnie. (laughs) <laughs> the full time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> it's nothing I special. It's. <laughs> it is. I, I bet it's a place where uh, lots of the way you have like lots of like. Is it like a place where you do like photography a little bit? Um, no, it, it's not even that. It's just like, oh, it's, I, this is. I here's a picture of me from the Grand Canyon, and like, oh, here's a picture of me and my sister. It's, <laughs> it, it's really, it's nothing. <laughs> it's like. It's like a day in the life of Donnie, but extended. Yeah. I, it's can, a, imagine, I can imagine the TikTok synopsis. synopsis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, I am so glad that we were able to have this discussion, and I will be definitely posting this interview on the Hard Tree um, Magazine YouTube channel, where it can be enjoyed by everyone <laughs> in anticipation for the release of, what was it again? The name of it again. A Vindication of Monsters. A Vindication of Monsters. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Donnie. It was a Thank pleasure you. talking to you. This was great. Thank you so much. <laughs>